Hello and welcome back to Alex Go Sailing. In this episode, we're going to be installing all of this fancy Rain Rain gear. And a big thanks to Rain Rain for giving me a discount on this stuff as it's really going to help my adventures coming up this season. Now, I'm going to show you how all this stuff works, how it all networks together, and how to install it on your boat if you're going to install this kind of stuff. So, uh, let's get it unpacked. And here we go. Look at all this stuff. All unpacked. I've networked everything together, as you can see and uh, I'm going to give you the rundown on what's actually going on. Right, so I'm going to start off on this side of the network. Right, so starting on this side, First off, we have the wind vane. This wind vane runs into this little box over here, and this is an ITC-5. This actually converts the old network signal coming from the wind vane and converts it to the new stuff so all the new plots and stuff can actually understand what it's saying. So this is converting it, but you can also see it's got this blue cap here and this blue wire coming off here. This blue cap is the end of the network string. You can see this blue line here that runs off to that bar there and that blue line runs over to the other side of the network so effectively this is just the string and you've got to have it capped off at both ends and uh, this is just the linking cable and these white ones are for any devices you have running off of them so following on from this one you can see this bar is connected to that string so each one of these legs coming off here is for a device Apart from this middle one, this middle one running down here is power to the network. So this power will be hooked directly up to the battery via switches and fuses. So this actually powers the network. Ideally, you want to have this in the middle of your network string, that blue line that's running all the way across. Um, for smaller networks, it doesn't matter too much, but you really should try and keep it to the middle. Um, each device has its a LEN value and you can calculate how many LEN each device has and how much it's using and then you can work out where the middle is. Some devices use more power than others so it's important to try and get it in the middle if you can. Now following this white wire around, this runs into my chart plotter. This is the Axiom 9 inch. Let's take this cover off so we can have a, a little look. Would you look at that? Hello! And this plotter is going to show me all of my charts, bits and bobs, speed, depth, all of that stuff, run it like a typical chart plotter. Um, but it also has another wire coming off of it. As you can see, it goes around there. That is the power. Because this device uses a lot of power, it's got its own individual supply. Now, if you flip it over to the back side, you can see on the back end, we've got some more sockets that aren't being used. One's for accessory, one's for a network, so say you want to run some cameras or some of the extra gear. Um, there's a sonar one here, uh, but this one is your power, it's like a reverting plug. I've also gone for this 90 degree connector, um, because standard, they come straight out into a wire. But the way I want to fit it, I want to keep it as low profile as possible, so I've picked up one of these 90s and that will save me some room behind the plotter. Now following this little white wire around, it goes to this i70 display, and this basically shows any data you want, like wind, depth, speed, those kind of things on your screen, um, separate to what the chart plot is showing, to so say you have charts coming up on here, and you wanna see your depth and wind and things like that extra, you can have this display, you can have many, many of these displays, but I'm just going for one to show like wind, or something separate that I'm not going to show on the plotter. Now let's follow this network wire over to the other side. It's quite a long cable but it's got to run the width of the boat and on this side it connects into another one of those bars but this bar is slightly different because it also converts the signal to the new network specifically this yellow one. So inside of this block there's some circuitry that actually converts the signal going through this yellow cable. And this yellow cable runs into my ST2000. Now this has its own 12 volt power supply separate to the network, just like the chart plotter it has. Um, it also has some data capabilities. And for that to happen, it runs on the old network. So to convert that, it's got to go through that block there. 
and uh, this will then allow it to communicate with the network and I should be able to control it from the plotter. Now that allows you to do some really cool features and uh, should be some great fun on the fast boat. Now going back over to that block. Now following this white leg down, goes past the tiller pilot and over here, this is the triducer. This is a DST810. You can also connect to it with your phone, which is quite cool as well. Uh, but this is going to give you depth, water speed and water temperature and uh, should just go into a through hull in the boat and luckily I have one already fitted. So that's a nice and simple install. Now coming back to that converter block, you can see another white leg coming off of it and that's going into my Raymarine Ray 53 radio and I can connect that into the existing aerial. Um, but it also has its own power supply uh, similar to the chart plotter and the tiller pilot because it draws a fair bit of power um, networks into the back you also have some extra wires there for other networking and also a connection to a GPS antenna if you want to add that apart from that it should be a fairly simple install since I already have the antenna hopefully the wire and aerial is all good on this boat now going back to the converter block you can see there's a blue cap on the end that caps off the network that line of network that goes through this blue line over to that block and then finishes in the ITC-5. So that's a very simple way to look at it. It's effectively just a bunch of lines coming off of that one string that runs across and goes into those devices. So quite simple when you lay it out like this. So overall a very simple network but it can get quite confusing if you're looking at what to buy. So I definitely recommend actually contacting some marine shops that actually sell this kind of gear, or even contacting Raymarine themselves, and uh, I'm sure they'll help you out with figuring out what you need. Uh, it's pretty simple, network your devices, and then figure out from there how many things you need to attach to your network. But now I think it's time to actually get some of this stuff installed on board Mingle, and uh, get it kitted out with some of the goodies from Raymarine. So uh, let's get cracking. Right, it's another day and I'm just about to install all of the Raymarine gear that they sent over. And I'm just gonna go over the plan quickly. If you come inside, we've got this mess, which isn't that much of a mess since we've gone over and labeled everything. Bow light, what's that, Met, mask light, some other stuff. So all labeled, all neat over here as well. And then on this side, this cooker needs a bit of a clean, but We've got all the network stuff brought in, some extra cables. Uh, here's one of the displays and a few box of bits outside, and some more network stuff. Um, but over here, I've removed this cover panel. Kind of just another bit of fiberglass, bit messy. It's meant to hide the wires. Now you can see here the cutouts for the old Rain Marine displays. And then this is some GPS log or something. Um, and then there's like a white cap that caps this off. Um, the chart plotter will stick out a fair bit further than this inside the cabin, so in reality it won't be too bad. And then we'll have this network bar pretty much somewhere like there maybe, if I can fit it in. I mean it should fit in while I was looking, it looked like that edge was the best way to put it. Um, and I can just have it up in this corner, because then that, that then allows me to mount this uh, Right over in this corner here, we've got one of these short cables. Kind of wish it was a tiny bit longer, but I mean, it's gonna be the perfect length anyway, because this is gonna mount maybe a bit further back than that, but somewhere in there. That's for this other wire, which is goes to the mast, and this is for the wind vane. So this goes into that converter through some holes on the side of it. And if I open this up, right, the cap's off now, and you can see inside, so inside you can see we've got speed, temp, wind, compass, uh, rudder and depth. So this allows you to plug in say your wind transducer for example, which we're doing. And that's going to plug in on this wind one. Now you can see the wires are all colour coded. So what we've got black, blue, yellow, red, green, that's all in there. So that's good. So we can just plug those directly in. I'm going to hook this up going to run the network cable through we're going to hook up the depth transducer and it does the speed as well and temperature i'm going to whack it in that hole there run that wire we're going to hook up 
This bar, this this is the converter for the tiller pilot. That's going to go in here, probably mount it to that block of wood or this block of wood or somewhere. Um, radio will go in there and uh, we're going to get all of that stuff situated and then we can start wiring it in directly and cutting holes over here. So it's time to get cracking. I'm going to set a little bit of a time lapse going with me feeding through wires because that's pretty straightforward and self explanatory. And then we're going to hook up some of the bits and bobs and get into it. So I've positioned my template and it's very close on this edge where that circle is, very close. So I've got maximum width, just hits that dotted line, so I'm lucky there. And we've just got to drill these holes in the corner, they're 24 millimeter. So just drop a pin in there. I've got my drill down here. I'm using one of these bits because it's the only one that has really got 24 millimeter and it does the trick it's got a nice pointy tip to get the initial bit started so what i'm going to do is use this do a little spin move to the next corner a little spin a little spin a little spin and what that'll do will mark all the four holes and then if i drill this one and say i rip up the all of the paper with this drill bit then at least i've got the other four holes marked so that'll save me a bit of hassle so let's get drilling <laughs> So this fits now, we'll slide that in, snug enough, and then we can put the brackets on the other side. So let's jump around there. In that nicely labeled packet, we've got the panel gasket. So they give you the middle bit, which is quite nice because you can probably use that for some other things. Now you also get this little envelope full of all the fixings, which is nice. And inside there you get these threaded bars. All you've got to do is thread them on without cross threading them and then just wait till they bottom out by hand. Do them as tight as you can with your fingers and then install the other ones. So there's four of these, don't drop them. All right, now that that's in, we can actually put this in the boat. All right, so double check that your gasket's nice and clean. Make sure the surface on the outside's nice and clean. And then what you can do is feed it round. Now that it's in place, you also are given these little brackets here. Now they go one way and one way only, and on the front of them it says, do up finger tight only. So all you've got to do is place them on. They only go this way round, and then you are given these little threaded caps. All you've got to do is thread it on, and then do it up finger tight only. Uh, we'll get the other one on first. So that's going to hold that in place. And then we're going to whack on the other one, you can see, finger tight only. And uh, that one just slots in. I'm going to lift it, the headlining over it because I don't want that to be uh, between the two. Right, that's not going anywhere. Look at that. Lovely. Right, so that's all hooked up now. I plugged in the 90 degree connector um, and that's screwed in. Does the network and the power and uh, these are all done up nice. So what I might do as well is actually, once this panel's on, it'll only probably come up to like there. So what I might do is 3D print a cover, which I can use these threaded bars here to actually screw on and kind of neaten it up. Although this doesn't look too bad itself. It's just these uh, threaded bars, which I probably wouldn't be too happy about just in case you get thrown about and get one of those to the head. So that's all installed now. And uh, now we can move on to the I-70 hole. Right, so here's the I-70, the back of it anyway, and you can see we've got a square hole, so round peg, square hole, not good. So I'm actually going to use the multi-tool to buzz out a circle into this, and we're going to use the template that's provided by Raymarine for this. Um, we're going to get that fitted up nice. I'm going to try and align it the best I can with this big plotter and uh, make it look neat and tidy. Right, 
Right, we have the I-70. I'm just going to spin you around. That fits in the hole perfectly, nice and snug. So what we've got to do is we've got to remove the outside frame. So it just clicks off. You've just got to get a nail underneath it to pop it. It's easier from the middle as well. Don't try it in the corners. Try in the, in the middle. Get all four corners or four get all four sides and it just comes off. So that's just the surround. Now with the surround off, you can see in the corners, the screw holes. Now before we screw this in, we've got to put the gasket on. It's exactly the same situation. The back just reveals the foam side. So this is the sticky side, you can see shiny. That side's just a bit of foam. Right, so I'm gonna place that in there and then I'm gonna get it level and then I'm gonna put the screws in, but I need more than one hand. Right, I've also drilled four holes in the corners there for the, the screws. They are provided, they are these little stainless steel ones, very handy. You do have to remove the buttons off the screen, nice and easy. Um, but yeah, I used, I think is it one mil, one and a half mil, uh, just undersized for the screw. So I'm gonna screw this in and do it up and then that'll be fitted. That's all screwed on now. I can replace the buttons. They just push on, they uh, just held them with a little recess kind of thing. So they just kind of click in. Now all we have to do is put this cover back on. It's just a little bit of trim. They do in the box provide a like silver, gray kind of one. But I think I'm just gonna go with a black because it'll match that big thing. Uh, just click that in. Click, click, click. I'll have to go around and dust everything off, but I'll whack this cover on, like so, and that's it. That's the final setup outside. Right, so it's time to go back inside, and we're going to fit the radio next. I'm inside, got the radio. I've already pulled the caps off the sides, as you can see. Nice and easy, just slide off. And then you have to drill your own holes into the corners, although they already have like a pre thing on the back. Um, but yeah, you got to draw your own ones because there is two different hardware choices, screw or a bolt, so uh, that's your choice. But it's quite easy to drill the hole, and then I've already put that same gasket on, stuck it on the back, and then we're going to stick it in that hole. And I've pre-drilled holes because I'm going with screws. Um, the one downside is that hole is slightly too big and all the extra screw holes around the side. But I might end up fixing that with some gel coat if I'm doing some stuff inside. But we're going to get this installed for now and I can come back later and make it look nice if I so do please. So that's the radio installed, the plotter installed, and the I-70 installed, and then the ITC-5 round the corner there. We've also got that network lock that won't be screwed down, it kind of be held in place sandwiched between these two. Um, we've also got to place this network block, which is that converter that converts for the tiller pilot. That's going to be screwed on one of these, I'm going to do that now. and. I'm also going to install the depth finder down there right now. Right, so this DST810, the smart one that has an app you can connect to your phone, it's got a little arrow on the top of it showing which direction you should place it because that's where the wheel spins. Um, you can also see the O-rings and stuff that are on it, make sure it has them, make sure they're clean. And uh, yeah, all we've got to do is put it down that hole. Right, so in that goes. Make sure that arrow's pointing straight. I just threaded that on the rest of the way. Right, so that wire will get chased up next to this hose, which is like for the bilge pump. It runs up and out the back of the boat. 
Um, so we're gonna run it up with that and then in to the cubby in here. So we have that block installed, we have that depth finder slash water speed sensor installed, radio installed, displays installed, ITC5 installed, the wind vane has already been installed before. So all we've got to do now is hook everything up and then sort out the 12 volt power. Alright, it's the next day and in the dark of night I uh, just trimmed up this board to fit in the plotter fits quite nicely actually and doesn't actually stick out too far and I think I'll be able to use these studs to fix like a, a covering plate kind of thing um, I'll, what I'll do is I'll probably end up 3D printing a plate just to cover this um, just to hide a bit of it so people don't go unplugging or plugging things and kind of protect it from any water or fire or anything from down here that's the only concern um, but yeah looks quite smart neat tidy and uh, yeah it's got to touch up some of the electrics now Right, now that everything for the Ray Marine stuff is done on the other side of the boat, we've only really got to focus here and at the mast. So here what I need to do is run the data cable from the Tiller Pilot plug, which is just up that little hole up there, and run it out, and that needs to connect into this wire here. Now I can either crimp on a connector to the end of that and stick it in the correct hole, um, it's just a yellow data cable. The other two are power, I think, so we don't have to worry about that. I think it's just one wire. And then we could either strip it down and crimp it on, which might not be a bad idea because I can waterproof it properly, um, which I have to see. And it'd be good to shorten up this wire because I probably won't need it this long. Although it might be good to run this up to that corner and then do the splice there. The other thing is connecting the power for the radio, uh, but that's pretty much it because we've done the power on the other side there which hooks up the plotters and the network itself for power so we're going to strip the wires off of this and then connect it up to the battery and see if anything turns on Ooh. all right all right now let's see if we have anything working it's a bit sunny out here pop that off hop the plotter off yeah, it's a moment of truth oh there's a beep does this one do something is it a long press or is it a short press? Or is it too bright? I can't tell. Maybe a long press? Oh, there we go. Long press it was. Alright, that one's working now. Alright, so they are both on. Look at that. This is doing some Android something or other. Probably what it runs on. Axiom. How do you even say Axiom? 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 Axiom. Lighthouse 4. I did also do the latest updates, very easy. Let's see the network. So what we've got, we've got a depth finder, the converter and the I-70. Oh, and the ITC5 converter. That just popped up. So that's good. And this display, obviously. You can see the versions they're on. I'll do diagnostic sources and stuff and the one thing it's not seeing is the wind vane and that's because well it's not plugged in i've got to go make the connection at the mast base so apart from this loads of different settings i'm going to have to play with and set this up properly uh boat details i'm gonna have to put that in how easy is this it's a very responsive screen hey there we go mingle i'm gonna save Right, that's enough playing with these bits. I think it's time to start wiring things up inside the boat. Right, I don't know if you can see this. This is the end of the wire attached to the autopilot. And we need to get in here because I need to see which pin the yellow wire goes to. Or if there even is a yellow wire running to it. So, to do that, there's like a little uh, ring inside of this connector. Uh, there is a proper tool for it, which I don't have. Right, then you can see this little ring come off. I'll put that somewhere safe where I won't lose it. And I've already undone this little nut for 
a little grommet that keeps it like watertight. So, oh, I'll peel it back, peel it back. Right. Oh, that's wired up quite nicely actually. So, we can see the blue and the brown. That's your positive and negative. And then, see that yellow wire? That's the one we want. So now I'm gonna strip the wire that comes out of that converter block and we shall see what wires are in that. Get ready, boom. Let's strip it back a little way. So there's red wire, the yellow wire, and this other. So what I'm gonna do is attach this wire here so I can extend this wire so I can attach it directly into the plug that's just down the side of the boat for the tiller pilot. And I'll connect that wire on the female end of the plug that corresponds with where this yellow wire comes out of the male end of the plug. So I'm gonna get cracking. So I've now connected it there. And I'm just gonna put together that socket for the tiller pilot, which is underneath that pile of stuff. And I'm gonna apply power to the network, the plotter, and also there's a separate wire for the tiller pilot. And then hopefully it shows up on the screen. So up here I have the plotter on, and I've just got, I've got no charts on this yet, I haven't plugged them in. And what I have over here is the ST1000 that came with this boat. I've got the 2000 in the shed. Um, but we're just going to test it. So at the minute it's in standby mode. And over here, if we just hold down, go into build routes, you can just build your own little route going on here. So that'd be enough for what we're doing. It says yes. So we'll click follow. So now there's a route on the chart and it wants us to follow a waypoint it will want us to go backwards to that first point and then up um, but if we come over to the tiller pilot now this is in standby so yep standby mode and to make this go into the auto track mode um, what you got to do is press auto yeah and then hit the plus 10 and minus 10 it'll start beeping but then you got to press it again and then it had tried to steer to the course, as you can hear. Obviously, we're not going anywhere because we're still on land, but you can see it trying its hardest. But if we hit standby and bring it back in. Right, so I've just put it into the track mode again, and you can see it flashing between the waypoint markers. So that means it's working. Press it again, it'll try to go to that course. That's working, so we know our little route works. And you can see on the instruction manual, it gives you all the information you need to know how to set it up. And you can also see on here, there's the automatic acquisition and the manual acquisition. So two different modes to play with there. Now scrolling down to here, we've got wind trim mode, which will be quite handy on this boat. It basically steers the boat to the apparent wind angle and holds that angle. So but to enter that mode, it's just press standby and auto together and it will enter that in. Now it's all good having all these modes and features, but it's a bit difficult when I'm on land. So I'm going to wait till I'm on the sea with this boat and I'm going to play with all of the features and show you how they all work. So stay tuned for that. But now that we have the plotter working and the whole Raymarine system on, the only thing we have to do is hooking up the wind vane and to do that I'm going to have to put this mast up. So you will see me next when I decide to put this mast up. Now that's it for this episode. I hope the breakdown of the Raymarine network help some of you out with your upcoming projects this winter, as I can understand how daunting it can be. Also, big thanks to Raymarine for helping me out, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.